If you've ever edited a photo that you just feel like didn't quite live up to the moment that you were trying to capture, understand that we have all been there. My name is Austin James Jackson. I'm a professional landscape photographer based in Southern Utah. In today's video, I wanna show you guys five of my favorite Lightroom tricks that are gonna help you to create photos with more impact that really do the moment justice. So if you're a Lightroom user, these tricks can already easily be applied to almost any one of your photos to quickly and easily enhance your edits. Now, I know sometimes the hardest thing in photo editing can be just knowing what to do next. So if that's the case for you, you're definitely going to want to follow along with this video for these five things that you can do to make your landscape photos look even better. Now, let's not wait any longer. We're going to be jumping right into Lightroom Classic. Okay, so we're in Lightroom. I've already applied some basic adjustments to this photo. This was before. This was after. I've just gone through and adjusted some of the basic sliders here, some of the stuff that probably most of you guys are already using. And I just want to show you guys five tips for things that maybe you're not thinking about or that you're not doing. I suspect that even if you do know one or two of these, you probably don't know all of them. So here we go. The first thing that I want to show you to change is the profile. Now, by default, people usually use Adobe Color. You can change this to Adobe Landscape, and it just gives you a little bump in color. It basically just changes the color profile of your image. I can't tell you exactly um, how it works or like what the equivalent is of adding like vibrance and saturation but adobe landscape gives you a little bit better colors for landscape mode you can see here we've got adobe color the default and adobe landscape so that just kind of punches a little more color if you've already went through and edited and it's looking too oversaturated now you can actually adjust your settings uh, pretty simply just by moving the vibrance and saturation or down here in the hsl sliders now, the second thing that I like to do regarding the color in your image is actually to scroll all the way down. Make sure you're in the develop module, of course. Scroll all the way down to calibration, and then you'll see these sliders down here. You've got shadows, uh, red primary, green primary, and blue primary. Now, what this does is, well, I'm going to show you what I'll do, and then I'll explain how it works. So you're going to go to blue primary. You're going to bring the saturation all the way up. Now what that does, and don't be confused, a lot of people think this just brings the blues up, the same thing as the HSL slider, which is not true. What this does is it increases the amount of blue in each color. That's why you'll notice as I bring this up or down, more than just the blues are receiving color. You can see these yellows are getting more colorful or less colorful. So it's affecting the whole image. Now I really don't know why this ends up working well. A lot of landscape photographers do this though, and it just creates a little more appealing to the eye image when you do that. Now when you do that, you might notice that your image comes out a little too blue. You can offset that by going back up here and making some adjustments to the vibrance and saturation, and then go into the HSL sliders and just drop the blue a hair, maybe 25 or so points. So it just creates a little bit more compelling image that looks a little bit nicer if, if you're finding other colors like this yellow are a little over uh, a little hot they're a little too saturated you can reduce the saturation there as well so that's looking pretty good to me those are the two things that i do regarding color to every image you can already see how we've made a pretty big difference from where we were at the start now the next thing that i like to do is to use uh the radial mask which is a, a local adjustment you can go ahead and click right here if you have the most recent or like a 2023 version of lightroom classic you will see you have some options here now i like to use the radial gradient and i like to put this where the light in the scene is coming from this is going to help me to add a little bit of depth so the light in this image is coming from somewhere over in here the sun is setting like down in here you can tell because the sky is nice here plus i was there so i know the sun sets about behind this rock somewhere so i just want to add a little bit of light so i'm going to click and drag to open this gradient up and you can untoggle show overlay if you want to have this view here where you can see and then move it around but essentially you just want this to be like where the light is going to be coming from so the light is probably coming from about right here and you can drag this you can make it larger if you want you can feather it the more you drag this little red dot in the more you feather it i'll show the overlay so you can see that so you can see there's no feather versus a ton of feather you want a lot of feather on this um, i usually like to go about right there i'm actually going to drag this and make it a little bit larger and then what i'm going to do is i am just going to increase the exposure just a touch i am going to lower the dehaze slider not too much you can see how it gets kind of nasty pretty quickly just a few points there 
I can toggle that eye to see what that's done. And I'm gonna bring up the highlights, kind of add a little bit more glow in there. And that's looking pretty good. Now the problem you're gonna notice is I'm brightening these rocks, which doesn't really look realistic. So I can go in and use subtract and I can subtract the luminance range. I'm gonna do luminance range because it'll be an easy selection of the rocks. There's a variety of different ways you could select the rocks, the brush probably being the simplest but worst way to do it. But the luminosity or luminance range mask here, when I just click on the rock, you can see now it is showing anything that's white is gonna be subtracted from my mask because I use subtract to open it. So now when I look at the mask, let's see if I can show there we go now you can see the mask so we are not adjusting those rocks anymore so now when i toggle this you can see it's just behind the rocks is being adjusted and then the water which i'm fine with the water being adjusted because it is a reflection so that's looking pretty good to me i don't want to name that mask um and you can continue to play with this and kind of see what adjustments look good you can pop the whites if you want to give it a little stronger pop there but you can really adjust this but do use this wherever the light is coming from in your image it's gonna make a big difference i really like doing it this way um, and i use it pretty much all the time now the fourth thing that i like to do here is to add a little bit of foreground contrast so essentially by lightening this background we've inherently reduce the contrast definitely don't slide the contrast slider on this third one here because we want to reduce the contrast which by brightening it we have but i want to increase the contrast in the foreground this is going to help me to add a little bit of depth now depending on what kind of photo you have you're going to want to do this differently on this photo and on most photos you're going to be able to get away with a linear gradient you can select linear gradient, click and drag. Anything that's white is gonna be in your selection. Anything that's black is not. Anything that is in between black and white will be partially in your selection. So I want this to be nice and feathered. Probably like that. Now I can go in and I can just create an S curve here to add a little bit of contrast to the foreground. And somewhere about in there looks good. I wanna actually maybe pop the whites just to bring on this photo in particular, I wanna bring that water out. And then I also maybe wanna reduce the saturation. I don't like it being so blue. Somewhere about right there. Now you obviously don't need to reduce the saturation all the time depending on what kind of photo you have. But you can see now, when I toggle this before, after, before, after. So this just helps add a little bit more depth to my scene. It's a little bit flat here before the adjustment. And then once I've added the adjustment, it kind of helps to add a little more depth. High contrast in the foreground, low contrast in the background is really what we're going for, which leads right into tip number five here, which I'm gonna show you. You're actually gonna close out of this local adjustment and it is using the tone curve. Now, I recently made a video on YouTube covering the tone curve in Photoshop. You can do almost the exact same thing in Lightroom. I'm gonna show you what it is. You can't quite do it as good as you can in Photoshop, but you can still do a really nice job. What I like to do with the tone curve here is create an S curve. So drag down on the darks, drag up on the highlights. And then I like to go into the shadows and I like to bring the shadows up. So essentially I'm just protecting the shadows here. I wanna keep my darks low. Uh, you can also, if you don't want to adjust the curve, you can just go in and adjust the sliders down here. Darks down, shadows up, uh, highlights up, and lights, or I'm sorry, you want the highlights down and the lights up. So this is what that's going to look like by default. It's not really my favorite. We've removed a lot of this contrast in the foreground. What I'm actually going to do is go and adjust the selection for the highlights, the darks, the lights, and the shadows. Um, and so when you when you do this, it's a little hard to explain, but understand that uh, this slider, anything on this 25% or below is going to be shadows. Anything in this middle range here is darks. Anything in the middle range on the upper end is lights. Anything on the furthest end is highlights. When I adjust these sliders, it's going to adjust what is being selected. So when I drag this over to the left, you'll see how those shadows that are being brought up are now being decreased. Look at that curve go down as I drag this over. I usually like that about 10 points. And then I usually like the highlights about 90 points. That makes it so that we can create a little bit more targeted adjustment here to just protect the absolute very darkest pixels and just the absolute very lightest pixels, but add contrast to the rest of the scene. Ultimately, what that ends up looking like is something like before, after. 
before and after. I really like the way that looks. Sorry if that's a little bit confusing to understand. If you don't understand how the tone curve works, that's probably a little difficult for you to exactly see how that works, but just copy exactly what I did. Drag this left side over to 10 or 11, drag the right side over to 90 or 100, and then do something similar to these settings down here. You don't have to go at plus 100 on the shadows, but for this photo, I have it pretty close. Probably about right there is pretty realistic. So that is looking pretty good. So you can see how in just a couple minutes here, we've greatly, greatly made this photo look so much better uh, just by using these five simple Lightroom tricks. I'll show you the before and I will show you the after. Really liking how this looks. Hopefully it's helpful for you guys. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. I truly do hope this video is helpful for you. I try and keep them helpful and straight to the point. I really hope that you'll be able to pick up on some useful tricks to use in your next edit in Lightroom. Now, even better yet, go back and add these effects to your old photos and see how much better they're going to look. Of course, if you're trying to become a better photographer, my in-person workshops that I offer are by far the best way to do this. I recently announced my 2024 dates, which I'm gonna leave a link down below in the description for. If you want to really take the fast pass to taking better landscape photos, definitely ought to join me in 2024. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.